Hi folks, welcome to Meth and Old Madness brought to us by Dalton's Landscape Supply. Six weeks off over Christmas uh, has been a pretty good break, but uh, we're getting back into racing this Saturday night at the Racecourse Hotel and Motor Lodge, Ruapuna Speedway. Welcome to the show, AJ. Uh, you had a couple of events for your War of the Wings series. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, it's been a really great start to the um 2024 segment of the season, uh, two really good races, one down at Cromwell, one at Greymouth. Uh, Joel Myers, uh, you know, sort of snuck in the last gasp win to take out Cromwell when everyone had written Jamie Duff's name down as yeah. the winner. And then over at uh, Greymouth last weekend, Max Guilford really did show his class. He dominated the show, particularly the feature race, and he was the man to catch. Yeah, mad Max Guilford. We've had him on the show a few times, and he's certainly starting to poke his nose up in the sprint cast. I spent a few uh, meetings up in the North Island following the uh, International Midget, some pretty good racing there. And of course it was Michael Pickens, Buddy Kofoid fighting it out, but uh, some young guns coming through the Midget ranks, which we'll talk about a little later on, which is all good for our Access Man Midget Car Championship. Welcome to the show, Louise, and uh, you've had a heck of a uh, Christmas break and uh, just got yourself all the way back from uh, uh, the Chili Bowl, I think it is. Uh, tell us what happened over there. Yeah, I had a, an amazing week over in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma for the Chili Bowl Nationals. My first ever ones, and I've been dreaming of going since I was a little girl. So it was awesome to finally check that one off the bucket list and see some of our Kiwi boys with my, uh, Michael Pickens and Brad Mosen representing as well and, and catch up with some old friends, which was always nice. Yeah, excellent. I'm sure you're rubbing shoulders with uh, some pretty big uh, Speedway personalities over there. And uh, of course, Michael Pickens uh, crashed out in the feature, which we'll cover later on. Uh, but good to see uh, two Kiwis representing midget car racing at the Chili Bowl this year. Well, to get the show started, we'll get into Crash of the Week. And uh, anyone that's uh, had a look at our Facebook page over the last few weeks will remember this crash. It was from our last meeting, and it was Lindsay Gilbert, uh, the absolute greatest showman, putting on a performance like no other. And Lindsay coming back to the track after a few years off uh, had some terrible setup problems but uh, inadvertently AJ he entertained the crowd and put on a spectacular performance uh, before the racing started. Oh what a showman and um, you know the, that's one thing about Gilby is that it is foot hard down all the time and um, 90,000 something hits <laughs> that, that that has had globally and and you know some friends in America they just said man that guy was committed and I'm thinking maybe he should be after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lindsay, uh, you're always welcome at Ruapuna Speedway. We know you've been watching uh, racing modifiers for a while, and we did promote you as the showman, but man, that was so spectacular. As AJ said, 90,000 plus hits on the uh, Facebook page. Absolutely phenomenal. It went viral for a wee while there, and uh, it was great for Ruapuna to uh, host you doing that. Lindsay is racing, I believe, this weekend, uh, AJ, with the uh, War of the Wings, so uh, let's see what he gets up to this time. Yes, he's entered, so, uh, you know, just, uh, you, you know, you're going to just get a whale of a show from Lindsay Gilbert. There'll be no scraps on the plate. <laughs> Absolutely. 20 cars uh, registered for the uh, Sprint Car War of the Wings this week, which we'll talk about later on. So uh, that uh, War of the Wings series really continuing to be the premium uh, Sprint Car series in the South Island. Well, time to move on to the Littleton Engineering Review, and uh, the first meeting we'll look at is the International Midgets, which uh, circulated around the North Island. Some pretty good racing there, Louise. Uh, Michael Pickens uh, highlighting with Buddy Kofoid. Yeah, definitely. As always, the internationals put on a great show. A little bit different this year, obviously, Boxing Day and the other meetings not happening at Western Springs, which even though I didn't even attempt to go, it definitely felt still weird even watching the live stream from home not at Western Springs. It definitely changes the whole atmosphere of everything, and it was a real shame, but obviously they still put on a great show at Waikaraka and the other tracks that they visited too. Yeah, uh, just a note on Western Springs, I actually went past there when I was in the North Island and uh, I cannot believe that they're going to run a race meeting there on the 17th of February. The place is full of weeds, it's uh, looking uh, damaged uh, beyond repair at this stage. It'll be a magnificent effort if they can get it up and running and we really hope they do because we need uh, Western Springs to be running. Well AJ, uh, you had the uh, War of the Wings, a couple of uh, meetings uh, in the Christmas break and of course just prior to Christmas we had uh, a meeting. Uh, tell us all about that. Yeah, the series kicked off at Ruapuna December the 16th and it looked like it was going to be the Joel Myers show. Uh, he put up a whale of a performance and mm. led the bulk of the 30 lap feature and sort of like with the white flag in sight, uh, had a throttle linkage fail and that was the end of him. Connor Rangi, you know, absolute top mm. effort by Connor working the traffic, working the track and he was closing in on, Con on um, Joel before that even happened. 
but um, he was there. He was a guy that uh, took the chequered flag, so a great win for Connor Rangi. Uh, but felt really good for them too because you know they've sort of had a little bit of an up and down time. Um, but boy, that kid is classy, uh, as in Connor. Yeah. Um, and Joel Myers just picked up exactly where he left off from last season. He, he's a dominator. Brendan Crouch, it's taken him a wee while to adapt to the Kevin Freeman car, mm. but when you look at it, he is second in the points standings for the Hydrolink War of the Wings. He's leading the time trial points. And, and so Brenham Crouch, he, he, he takes me as one of these guys that he races for the points. Mm. And so he's always right there at the thick end. And uh, he, he's putting up performances that I don't think he's being given the credit for. That'll be a real surprise for a lot of people because Brent, we all thought Brent, because he hasn't won uh, a feature race yet, would just be uh, sort of mid-pack. But uh, he's obviously very consistent. And uh, I noticed that Greymouth, um, with his dad Leighton coming mm. across and being on the tools, they were making some pretty wholesale changes to that sprint car as well. And he had a pretty good result uh, at Greymouth as well. Yeah, absolutely. And if you watch his performance in feature races, he's one of those guys that keeps with the traffic, <clears throat> so if he starts, let's say, from grid five or thereabouts, he keeps with them. But come about 10 laps to go, he starts really making his moves. He starts grinding them down. And, uh, you know, he's he's been on the podium pretty much the whole series. So, you know, he's, he's going really well. Yeah, good results for him. And uh, tell us about the uh, event in Cromwell. That was a pretty interesting finish. Oh, yeah. You have bog standard Cromwell hot as... Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, it was good actually to see old Jason Scott rejoin the series for the race. And, nice. and Scotty, is, he is still the king of Cromwell. Mm. He, he ran pretty solidly. But um, Jamie Duff, it, Jamie put up a big performance and he was dominating the feature race. Led from the green flag until the chequered flag was in front of him. So <laughs> with about 100 metres to go, he was leading. And um, Joel Myers just reeled him in and pulled off a just an awesome Hail Mary sort of pass. Jamie thought that he could hear Joel coming around the outside of him, so he moved up just a little, yeah. and um, Joel just it. snooked him and, and cut it down low and won the dash to the line. Uh, it was classy. Yeah, it, I did it hear really that. Was. I did hear that Joel was very motivated and uh, put a uh, bombing sort of slide job on uh, Jamie. And uh, yes, uh, it all happened so quickly. Uh, Jamie had no time to recover, and Joel Myers just showing. Uh, his experience beyond his years to uh, even attempt to do that on our local favourite, Jamie Duff. So some pretty good racing there in the War of the Wings. And of course, they're racing at Ruapuna this weekend as well. We've already indicated 20 competitors in the sprint cars for the War of the Wings. It's a great series. And uh, with the growing crowd at Ruapuna, everyone's going to enjoy some good sprint car racing as well as some uh, good midget car racing. Well, Louise, we go back to you for the uh, Chili Bowl to review what happened over there. And uh, a lot of us know the results, but uh, how did our Kiwi guys go? Yeah, obviously it was a great week for a lot of drivers with over 370 of them entered. It's no easy feat to even really do well. It's a, it's a very unique event and a unique format with passing points being super important. Um, Michael Pickens was over there racing for Abacus Racing, who of course just picked up the USAC National Midget Series win with uh, Logan Seavey for the last season there. Um, and they had free cars there with Tyler Courtney and David Gravel also piloting the other two. So a very good calibre team there for Michael Pickens and obviously um, he was very comfortable right from the get-go. He um, picked up his heat race and qualifiers um, with a first place finish in both of those, but obviously he started off the front row, so the passing points were pretty minimal there. Mm. Um, he did a really good job to make the A main on his Monday night prelim night, um, and then locked it in with a third place podium finish, which unfortunately, uh, with the way the format is run, the third place, they don't make it into the A main for Saturday, so he had to run through the B on Saturday, um, which he was able to come home in third in, so he was the uh, only international to make the A main there, and unfortunately, oh, yeah. the first lap, he um, crashed out when he rode someone's wheel coming into turn three there, and that was pretty much all she wrote. But and a magnificent effort even to make it that far there for Michael Pickens, obviously a very talented race car driver. Yeah, it was a spectacular result for Michael, and of course we expect so much out of him. He's gone over to America and won feature races in the past, but it really goes to show you how good you've got to be to be a Chili Bowl champion. I was really impressed with Logan CV and how well that car that they put together, particularly for the Chili Bowl uh, at, from uh, the Swindell uh, racing team, how well that car performed. And uh, like you say, you've got to win your first uh, night, and then of course if you don't make the first two, 
you're going through the B. That's unheard of, isn't it? But uh, as you say, so many competitors over there. Uh, what was the word on Brad Mosen? I know he was over there and he was uh, racing the 47 car. Uh, any updates on him? Yeah, so Brad's prelim night was uh, Thursday night with the Bondio team and the 47, who was teammates with Zach Darms. Obviously, both very great calibre drivers that we're very familiar with here in New Zealand, of course. And the uh, midget car team that they were racing for there is a very historic team. They've got a lot of history there at the Chili Bowl, especially a very unique design that, you know, they only pull it out for the Chili Bowl every year. And they come from California, so it's it's not an easy feat for them to get there either. It's um, a big deal to them and a very important event. Um, but unfortunately, Brad didn't have the best week, um, mm -hmm. obviously no uh, credit at all to, to his talent. He's a very talented race car driver. Just struggled to get comfortable in the car there. Um, and he ended up winning his heat race off the front row as well, but unfortunately fell backwards in his qualifier, which put him in the B feature for his uh, Thursday night run, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, and then ended up not um, transferring into the A for his Thursday night, which was pretty unfortunate. So that led him into the soup for Saturday, which if you're not familiar, they start all the way down at like an O feature on Saturday, at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it was a long day for some of those guys. So Brad ended up starting in the I feature. Oh um, he transferred out of that into the H feature. And obviously you go to the back of that. Um, so he ended up 14th in the H feature. So that was the best run for Brad of the day. Unfortunately, not progressing any further there. What were your thoughts on uh, the Chili Bowl, Louis? Uh, your thoughts uh, from what you'd seen prior to going over and the reality of being there. Uh, how do you describe what was going on? Yeah, I've been closely following the Chili Bowl for as long as I can remember. It's always been kind of a staple event and, and what I do all week, either watching the live stream or, or just following closely on people's results over social media. I think it was it was basically everything I thought it would be. Um, I think that the way that people describe it really accurately describes the atmosphere and the feel and the, the electricity in the place. It, it's a really unique uh, feeling that you just don't really get anywhere else. Mm. Um, and obviously the caliber of drivers in the building, you go all the way from the old guys that race once a year that have driven 14 hours to be there and basically slumming it um, to, compared to you know the KKM trailer parked at the front there with their 15 entries. and and the best of the best racing for them. So it's, it's a really widespread variety of drivers, which is what makes it so cool. But definitely I uh, could do with being a little warmer. <laughs> um, the Sunday that we flew out was minus 18 and snowing. Oh so uh, definitely not keen on the winter weather in the middle of our summer, that's for sure. Um, but on a whole, honestly, it was just an experience that you never really forget. And it was one of those things that's just you kind of wish you would be able to do it for the first time all over again. Now you've done the first one, it's like you get that same feeling again, but definitely addictive and definitely keen to go back. Yeah, what a great experience that was for you, Louise. And uh, no guarantees at the Chili Bowl, Kyle Larson, as good as he is, uh, didn't make the A final. That's how brutal that series is. Well, folks, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And after the break, we've got the winners of our share and win competition. Welcome to Wellington's largest caravan and RV shop. CB Caravans and RV Centre look after repairs, maintenance and they are leak specialists. CB Caravans and RV Centre import UK caravans. Need to sell? They can help. CB Caravans and RV Centre, your caravan solution. Catch up with Will and Wendy today. Get ready for an action-packed evening at the Racecourse Hotel and Motor Lodge Ruapuna Speedway on the 20th of January. It's a night of family fun and thrilling racing with the Sprint Car Hydrolink War of the Wings. Watch American superstars Joel Myers Jr. and Brenham Crouch take on local hopes Jamie Duff and Connor Rangi. As well as three North Islanders Ben Matthews, Brad Mosen and Travis Buckley as they compete in the midgets in preparation for their New Zealand title shots. Bring your family for excitement, racing and unforgettable moments. Gates open at 4.30 and the dirt starts flying at 6 with the sprint car time trials at 5.30. Well, it's going to be a great night at Ruapuna this Saturday night. Make sure you get your tickets online at ruapunaspeedway.co.nz and uh, watch that War of the Wings and the uh, North Island Midget competitors coming down preparing for the Access Man Midget Car title. Well, a big thank you to all our share and win competitors. Uh, everybody spreading out our Facebook posts all around the uh, digital space. Louise, who are the winners this week? So our 10 winners of the passes this week are Rachel Decombe, Tara Smith, Amber Sinclair, Samantha Musson, Greg Ashby, Sue Forrest, Carol Piper, 
Michael Proctor, Kerry Mitchell and John Fisher. So if you're a lucky winner of our Share and Win competition, get yourself down to the public entrance and uh, get your family pass here. It's going to be a great night on Saturday night. Well, time to move on to Dirt Track News, brought to us by CB Caravans and RV Centre. And the first event we'll look at is the North Island Midget Car Championship, raced at Bay Park. And a uh, pretty good result here, AJ, uh, with Luke McClymont taking out a North Island Championship. Yeah, a name familiar to us, uh, having come down here and run in the Ruapuna Rumble for the wingless sprints the last couple of years. Such a talented driver. First mm. season of midget car racing, takes out the North Island Championship in the Seamount Racing Team. Alec Inslee, another name that we're pretty familiar with. Uh, you know, the young guns are really starting to rise up there, and so second, the North Island's for him. And the veteran... Mm-hmm. He's pretty young to be a veteran, but Brock <laughs> Maskovic, uh, he sat out last season, but really good to see Brock up there on the podium. Uh, he's a very fierce con- uh, competitor, and boy, he would have given everything. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Louise, uh, good to see the young talent rising. We uh, had Brad Mosen on the show a few weeks ago, and he was talking about uh, the young talent coming through, and some of these guys are very, very fast. Yeah, I think, as AJ just alluded to, obviously, Alec Inslee is definitely, he's been on the podium the last couple of meetings, and he's definitely put his name out there now, and I think that everyone's really starting to turn heads at just how talented he is, as well as you got Ben Morrison, who uh, put it on the pole for the 51 lapper at Bay Park over the International Series, um, and led a few laps there, which was a, a great deal to him, obviously, being his first season in a midget. Um, Campbell Stewart is another one. We saw him come third at the uh, Midget GP a couple of years ago, mm. which was also another, you know, another great result for a young gun. And Shaden Austin adapting to a new car now, but again showing great speed. So them as well as others throughout the field are, are definitely starting to kind of put their name out there and in front of all these big guys that have been winning for so long. Yeah, it was a great event and a uh, big shout out to uh, Melissa Webb from Bay Park. Uh, she's the promotions manager there. Uh, I uh, managed to get myself up to the VIP area, so thanks Melissa, that was great. Uh, sat with Bill Buckley for a few races and we managed to watch uh, Travis Buckley uh, get the second best time trial. Uh, actually, it wasn't the North Island Champions, it was the uh, week before that, but uh, great to see Travis Buckley, uh, AJ, starting to get into a form. That uh, trip to America a few years ago, really starting to pay off now. Yeah, he's become a bit of a regular, particularly in the California region with the midgets. And uh, you know, it, it is all about laps. And, and that's the advantage that drivers that get up to the States have when they sort of, when our Kiwi guys are scraping ice off the windscreen, <laughs> they're up there, you know, there's guys up there racing. And so they get the consistent number of laps, they stay race fit and they come back here and they're not running, they're sprinting the minute they hit the ground. Well, the V6 wingless sprints were at Ellesmere Speedway in the weekend and a good result for our local uh, drivers, Louise. Uh, It looked like Bailey Clive took it out. Yeah, we've seen Bailey a couple of times on the podium and at Victory Lane at Ropona Speedway this season and he's had a fabulous year, honestly. It's, it's been a, a bit of a change for him, obviously coming from stock car racing is a little bit different uh, vibe going on there with the whole no contact thing, but he's done really well and adapted really well and definitely showed some speed right from the get-go. Yeah, I remember his first win at the track when he won a feature race there. I thought, okay, well, was he lucky? And then I watched him again. He won another feature race. And then all of a sudden, he's really starting to cement himself as the fastest driver at Ruapuna. I'm sure uh, Shooter Hawkins will have something to say about with that uh, with the rumble. Uh, and as you indicated before, Adam Evans and Andrew Gregg. Good result for Andrew Gregg. He's a, a real journeyman in the V6 wingless sprints. A great supporter with uh, all those cars that he supplies to the grade. And uh, a good result for him and Amanda. Well, the next uh, event we'll look at is uh, this weekend's racing at Ruapuna Speedway. We'll f- talk about the War of the Wings shortly, but uh, AJ, we've got nine North Islanders coming down to prepare for the Access Man uh, Midget Car title uh, with just one meeting before that actually happens. Uh, we've got the likes of Brad Mosen, Alec Inslee, Luke McClymont, the uh, current North Island champion, Neville Basilay. Now, not Jaden Basilay. Neville's having a crack in the car because uh, uh, apparently Jaden's overseas. Travis Buckley, Trent Way, Peter Honeybell, and Max Guilford. That's a great lineup. It's a terrific lineup. But you know, there's there's still some pretty good ones up in Auckland. But these guys here, you know, there's not a lemon amongst them. Yeah. You know, they are very, very fierce competitors. And you know, you've got past national champions in there. You've got you know the stars of the future. You've got the the guys like Brad Mosen, who has been around such a long time for such a young guy. Yep. And uh, it's going to be very, very exciting. I'm picking the midgets could just about steal the show on Saturday night because it, it's going to bring our guys up 
a step or two as well. And, you know, some of our guys, they just love those big occasions. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Glenn Jury, you know, the, the old veteran, just turned 50 apparently. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's going to inspire our guys to uh, really get up on the wheel. It, um, it's going to be a real... Um, barn burner. Yeah, it's a real good warm up for our local guys, and uh, I'm sure the likes of Tom Lumsden, uh, Liam McCubrey, and a few of those other guys, or Jack Lowe, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a um, very experienced driver here based in the South Island. Um, it's certainly going to be worth getting down to the track. Uh, that's a pretty good undercard for the War of the Wings, and as AJ alluded to, it may even uh, be the feature for the night. Uh, Louise, you're uh, a great follower of Midget Car Racing. Uh, what are your thoughts with these North Islanders coming down? Yeah, I'm certainly excited. I think, especially after the chili bowl, Brad's going to be really hot on his tail. Obviously, coming off his his wee holiday there from Speedway New Zealand, I think that um, he's going to be itching to get back into victory lane. But I wouldn't sleep on uh, Alec Kinsley doing well either. I think that he's going to be right up there too. Absolutely. Well, time to move on to the War of the Wings uh, in, event in Greymouth. And uh, just before we do that, uh, we had Chris Gemmett uh, stepping into the sprint car first time for the year, uh, AJ. I thought he went pretty well. Talk about a baptism of fire, you know, going from the grader and the, and the water cart to a sprint car. Of course, he's got some pretty good racing pedigree there. It's in the DNA, a very good solo rider back in the day. And, yep. and then he's been um, you know, driving the wingless sprints and gone pretty well with that. But, you know, I thought he went really well. And, um, you know, the first couple of uh, outings were, were interesting. He, yep. he was just starting to sort his lines out. Uh, he actually got the highest points for the um, making up the moves in the feature race. And oh, so it, it compares where you finish to where you start. And you know, yeah, there was a little bit of attrition, yeah. but um, yeah, he did not disgrace himself. And yeah, by the time Chris gets a few more laps under his belt, he, he's gonna be there or thereabouts. You know, he's, he's gonna start pushing along some of the guys who have got way more laps in the sprint car than he has. Well, great to see Chris Gemma getting some laps at uh, Greymouth Speedway, ably supported by Macca, Charlene and Kane, his pit crew, and uh, they had a really enjoyable day out. Well, another personality that was at uh, Greymouth Speedway was Leighton Crouch. This is Brenham Crouch's father. He brought the whole family over for Christmas. They're tripping around uh, watching sprint car racing, and he'll be attending Ruapuna Speedway on Saturday for the very first time. And a pretty interesting character. This is what he had to say. Uh, time's been good here. We've been here about a week. We stayed down in uh, Teano with uh, Daniel Anderson and uh, obviously appreciate him for taking us in and kind of showing us around and doing some pretty cool things. Um, but uh, made our way up the West Coast and, uh, you know, spent, spent a night at a couple different places and uh, saw the glacier over at uh, Franz Joseph and here we are. So uh, getting looking forward to going towards Nelson and spending some time with Kevin Freeman. Now we're uh, really interested in uh, Crouch Motorsport because it's uh, reasonably famous in the last couple of years. But uh, give us some background, mate. You're uh, an ex uh, sprint car driver or wingless sprint car driver? Well, that's what they say. I wasn't very good. Not near as good as these boys are these days. But uh, I sure, I sure tried as a hobby, um, and uh, met a lot of great people along the way, and you know, made some good relationships with with a bunch of people and manufacturers. And you know, it kind of just carries over into what we're trying to do with Brenham and Crouch Motorsports today. Well, you're pretty famous for having Buddy Coford and Corey uh, El uh, Eliason in yep. your team there. Uh, how do those um, relationships come come together? I mean, that's uh, pretty big names to have in the industry. Yeah, so uh, got to know Buddy really well whenever we were at KKM. Brennan was over there uh, racing for Keith and, uh, you know, kind of got close to those guys. And uh, then, you know, obviously I wanted Buddy to drive for us when we were building this team. You know, we always wanted to have the 11 to kind of build the notebook for the one and, you know, that's we, we wanted it to, you know, go a little longer than it did. And unfortunately, you know, we couldn't come to the agreement on, on some things. And that's just the way this business works, unfortunately. No hard feelings. It's just business, you know. So, um, but he's a great guy. You know, wish him the best. And, he, and he's done us a great job. You know, we brought Corey on after he left. Um, it was fun racing with Corey. Um, I mean, you know, Corey is Corey is a, is a, is a great guy. You know, he's uh, he's good at what he does, and you know, but we knew we kind of wanted to go in a different direction this year. And you know, Corey obviously had some some good opportunities that he needed to make a decision on and take, and so you know, he did that. And, and we're kind of putting our focus on Brenham in the one car, you know, this year. Well, we haven't seen the best of Brenham yet. He's been very good over in America. Some of the uh, races I watched him uh, win some of the championships there are very very fast. You're making some pretty uh, big uh, changes to the car today. Tell us what you are hoping to achieve. 
Yeah, we're just trying to, like I said, we're trying to get him comfortable. You know, it's it's a little different here. The racetracks are flatter. You know, they, they dry out a lot quicker, you know, so we're just trying to get him, you know, comfortable. We're, we're running different tires, different chassis. You know, everything's just a little bit different. So we're trying to just get him as close to what we have at home and, and, and that Brad and, and Austin give him, you know, to, to get him to get him to where he needs to be here. Well, mate, you're going to give, uh, you're going to experience Rua Puna Speedway for the first yeah. time uh, next weekend, and yeah. uh, we've certainly enjoyed having Brendan here. He's been a great representative of your family. He's a good hard worker and uh, presents himself well. Uh, you must be pleased how he's going. He's only a young fellow. No, absolutely. We were, uh, he made a lot of progress last year, and we were, you know, we, we kind of didn't plan on chasing points. It just kind of happened, and, you know, we wanted him to get some outlaw and some high limit experience, and he did that. So we're going to try to do the high limit deal this year. And, you know, I really can't thank Joel Myers and Junior and Senior enough. They kind of set this deal up with Daniel Anderson and Kevin Freeman for him to come over and make laps. And, you know, it's the first year we haven't been at the Chili Bowl in a long time, but uh, it, it really is it really is a, a blessing, and we appreciate the opportunity for him to make some laps, and, and we love it over here. It's It really is a beautiful, beautiful country. Well, a pretty interesting character, Leighton Crouch, and a great supporter of sprint car racing in America. Well, AJ, uh, the uh, War of the Wings series is halfway through now. Uh, what do you make of it all? Very competitive. Three features so far, three different winners. But when you start looking through the field, Dylan Forsey, a sprint car rookie, you know, fifth mm. in the feature race the other day, and he's already registered some quick time points. Um, Jaden Dodge blindingly fast but he seems to be everyone's punching bag which is a hell of a shame mm. but he's still sitting there in sixth you've got Caleb Bourne who's just starting to make a little bit of a presence in the point standings the Duff man didn't have a good night over at Greymouth um, you know he sort of got shuffled back mm. with um, you know various calls and so on which were quite correct but he is so fast. Mm. And Matthew Levisage, how good he had that very big crash at Ruapuna um, at our race on the 16th of December. And um, he was sore after that, but he showed his absolute class at Greymouth the other day. Very classy. And, you know, when you look at the performance of guys like Oscar Harcourt and Bailey Patterson, you know, there's some real talent. And laps are what are going to count for these guys. And the exposure to the faster cars or the more experienced drivers from overseas, it really does sort of all go well for sprint cars in the South Island. Oh, absolutely. And uh, there was a memorable moment as I was watching the sun coming down at uh, Greymouth and uh, those sprint cars coming off turn two, biffing up uh, dirt and clods up into the crowd. How they look powerful and fast. And uh, what a great experience it was for the Greymouth track. They've be really been struggling over the last year or so. A great crowd in which was really good to see and uh, Max Guilford man what a what a great win that was and uh, with Max uh, really getting to the front he knew how to win that race didn't he he did he dictated the terms and I wondered whether like with the, a couple of aborted starts I, I mm. wondered whether he was going to sort of grab it uh, the same you know when they actually did go racing and it didn't take him long to assert himself the the hydrolink war of the wings show at Greymouth has become their key event for the season. Yeah. And what I really like about it is the community get right in behind it. It is their biggest crowd. The uh, Grey Star had three great big features on the back page of their newspaper about sprint cars and so on. And so, you know, it stirs up the interest. And, and what's really cool is seeing these West Coast kids walking around getting the autographs and, mm. and buying the T-shirts and the posters and all of that. You know, it's really good. And for what is New Zealand's smallest Speedway New Zealand track, boy, they punch above their weight because there was a lot of efficiency that you mm. saw from their officials and so on. And, and the West Coast are just so, you know, they're just such friendly people. And the after match function's always pretty good too. <laughs> it was a great weekend. I got there on Friday and uh, there was. Um, uh, carnivals, uh, a stall in the middle of town, there was fireworks in the evening, it was great, I couldn't work out why the fireworks were there, we must have uh, tapped into some big weekend over there, but uh, really made for a great weekend of racing, and as you say, a few drinks afterwards and then uh, enjoying a few stories uh, went down pretty well also. Time to move on to preview of the week. And of course, the big race meeting is Ruapuna Speedway on January the 20th. We've got the Sprint Car War of the Wings, uh, sponsored by Hydrolink. And of course, we've got uh, a field of 20 midgets uh, racing with all our other supporting classes. Uh, Louise, uh, let's talk about the midgets first. I know it's a preparation run for most of the North Islanders, but this racing is going to be pretty interesting. 
Yeah, we've seen a, a great increase in midget racing in the South Island in the last couple of uh, meetings that we've had at Ruapuna. We've seen them put on some really good shows. Obviously, we know that Liam and Jack are really good at racing each other and, and getting right up there in each other's space and, and doing what they need to do to make those passes and put on a good show for the crowd. I think that there'll be no shortage of that again this weekend, especially mixing in those North Islanders. Yeah, there's a wee subplot going on here too, of course, with Jack Lowe being the XC Mount racing uh, driver and Luke McClymont uh, taking his drive this year. Uh, that was uh, mutually agreed, so no big issues there. But uh, I'm sure Jack Lowe would like to take on Luke McClymont and show him the way. He's got the horsepower to do it. He's got the uh, the good uh, sponsored car by City South Vans Pairs and uh, a good crew behind him. It'll be great to watch that play out, uh, AJ. It will, and um, Jack is another one of these drivers. He just thrives on the big moment. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to a very big show from Jack. And of course, the feature race is the Hydrolink War of the Wings. It's the uh, biggest uh, race series for sprint cars in the South Island, and they've put on a hell of a show in the last few meetings. Uh, what can we expect, AJ? I think Brenham Crouch is going to really come off the ropes this time. He's got his dad over here helping him, and, and his dad knows you know, exactly what makes Brenham feel comfortable in the car. Um, you've got Joel Myers Jr. You know he is he's the king right now. He's he's leading the way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually really looking at a big night from Jaden Dodge. You know if he can take the target off his car, <laughs> this is his night. Yeah, I agree. Jaden's uh, one of the best drivers we've got, and he always starts really well, and he, he sort of finds a bit of trouble from time to time. There's a few uh, clashes going on in amongst the ranks there. But uh, he would be the uh, best driver with the most potential in my mind for sure. Well, look, folks, it's going to be a great night out of the track. Uh, get yourself down there by 5.30. They've got a time trial starting then. The official racing starts at 6 p.m. Hydrolink War of the Wings and 20 Midgets Racing, as well as all the supporting classes. My thanks to AJ Batt and Louise Smith for joining the show. And until next time, keep your foot up it.